Well, I'm a dumb f bitch. Hi, welcome or welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. This is my second episode of First and Last. I do explain what inspired me to do this series in my previous video, which was reading only the first and last book in the Thorner Class series by Sarah J Maas. But essentially, it is a series that I'm doing where I read only the first and the last book of a series I've never read before. Following up on Throne of Glass, I thought the next series that I could do, which I never had any interest of reading ever, but I do for this series. Like I don't mind doing a first and last one for it. And that is the Mortal Instrument series by Cassandra Clare. I will already be reading the first book, which is City of Bones, and the sixth book in that series, which is City of Heavenly Fire, I believe. And this is why I'm a dumb f bitch, because I didn't want to buy the books, okay? I didn't want to buy the books because I just knew that I wouldn't want to keep them and it would be a waste of money. So I went to my library, but they don't have the books. So I thought, oh, maybe someone's just checked them out. I will wait for them to bring them back. But that just hasn't happened. And I was a damn that I wasn't going to buy the book. I wasn't going to use a credit on Audible for the audiobook. It's not on the UK script. It's unavailable in my country. And I wasn't going to buy the Kindle versions either. Like I wasn't even going to go and get it secondhand off eBay. Like none of that. I was just not going to put any money towards the Mortal Instrument. I didn't want to do it. So I was waiting and waiting and waiting. And then on Libby, I checked out City of Heavenly Fire, but they didn't have City of Bones, like it was on hold. So again, I'm waiting for somebody to release that hold and it just wasn't happening. So I was like, okay, right. I'm just going to have to go for the Kindle version. It's half price at the minute. Let's just do it. And bear in mind, I've been doing this humming and hawing for the past week and a half, nearly two weeks. And so I went on Amazon and I went on the Kindle page for City of Bones and I've actually owned it since 2013. I bought it on the 10th of October, 2013. I've had that shit on my Kindle for nine years. Nine years, and I was waiting. <laughs> I was waiting for ages for somebody to release a hold of it or return it to the library. And it just wasn't happening. So I had it the entire time. Bitch, the calls are coming from inside the house. <laughs> so now I can actually start because I do have it anyway, so. Uh, why didn't I just check? I should have just checked. I need to sort this Kindle out. I have so much on it from like the past 10 years that I've forgotten about. And obviously City of Bones was one of them. I must have bought it after watching the film because the film came out in 2013. I can't really remember the film that much, but I don't remember hating it. And I also saw the first episode of Shadowhunters, the TV series, and I reviewed it for Spoiler TV. And Kat McNamara, who played Clary, I think, followed me on Twitter after that. I'm just gonna double check, does she still follow me? Oh my God, she does, she still follows me, what the hell? So yeah, I reviewed the first episode on Spider TV and she loved it and followed me and apparently she still follows me, so that's amazing. And I do recall liking the first episode of the TV show, but I never really continued after that. So, Shadowhunters, The Mortal Instruments, Cassandra Clare honestly just wasn't for me. So I don't really know the whole ins and outs of the storyline of the Shadowhunters series, the Mortal Instrument series, but I do think it's like kind of an urban fantasy young adult series. We follow Clary, who is told that she's special, and I think she has vampires. I don't know. Okay, our 15 year old protagonist, Clary, she witnesses what looks like a murder, but the victim's body has vanished into thin air. What's even more strange is that her best friend, Simon, couldn't even see the attack take place. Next thing Clary knows, her mother has disappeared and a heinous monster is in her apartment. So there is like this whole world of werewolves and vampires and things like that that's kind of opened up in front of Clary's eyes, and she meets young shadow hunter Jace and his friends, Isabel and Alec. I mean, to be fair, on paper, it sounds right up my street. And you're talking to somebody whose favorite show back in the day was True Blood. So I'm gonna spend my day reading City of Bones on my Kindle and hopefully enjoy it. I will let you guys know what I'm thinking of it. And then once I finish City of Bones, I will start listening to the audiobook of City of Heavenly Fire and hope for the best. <laughs> I most likely will be confused. I will try and do predictions at the end of reading this, see if any of that comes true. Probably not. The Throne of Glass series really threw me through a loop, but you know, that's my own fault for skipping six books in the middle of that series. So yeah, I'm only skipping four books. Hopefully there's not that much different between City of Bones and City of Heavenly Fire, but we're going to find out. So stick around to see that and don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, let's go. <laughs> when we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us. 
was crazy, but things are finally right. With you and I, the future is bright. So it's been about seven hours since I filmed the introduction and I'm only two chapters in. <laughs> you might not know this about me, but I get distracted so easily. And a lot of my friends and a lot of people I'm subscribed to on YouTube uploaded videos. So I was like, you know what? I can just take a little bit of a break after the first chapter, watched a video, and then I went on to the second chapter and then I couldn't stop with the videos. So my bad, I'm only two chapters in. And you know what? I'm not hating it. I'm not hating it so far. I do find Clary to be very whiny. So I'm not really gelling with her as a character just yet, but I hope there is character growth. There was some friction between her and her mum in the second chapter. And I do know from the synopsis of the book that her mum disappears. So I think we're gonna see Clary, 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 learn to love her mum more. Maybe to be a more responsible daughter. Cause when you're 15 and you're going out to clubs, that's naughty. So her having to, go on vacation with her mum and I think it's her mum's boyfriend or something. I, I don't know the ins and outs of that kind of family dynamic. And then she won't get punished. Yeah, so far it's fine. The first chapter was a little intriguing, but it hasn't blown me away yet. But at least the writing I don't find awful. And I feel after reading Den of Vipers, worst book I've ever read. I don't know if you know that. The writing style of books can't get worse than that one. So allow me to read a bit more. Yeah, I don't really have thoughts. But all I want to do is just like listen to music and go about my business. Instead, we're reading. We are reading and it's going to be fine. I am in desperate need of a haircut and I will get one. I will get one. Right now I look like shit. My kids are driving us up the wall this morning. They've been tripping me up left, right and centre. I've had to put these, these strings in here because they've been clawing my neck and everything. The little shits. Oh, I'm just sick. I'm honestly sick today. It doesn't help that I'm reading this. <laughs> I'm not loving it. I'm finding it really boring. Like, it's not offending my eyes or anything. I don't think it's terribly written. And I was expecting worse, not gonna lie. But I'm just so bored. Like, I'm halfway through. I'm 52% through. And not a whole lot has happened now. I mean, we started off with quite a lot of interesting things, you know, and then Clary's mum went missing. I think I updated you in chapter two. In chapter three, her mum got taken. She had this like really sinister phone call with Clary. And now this whole shadow hunter world has opened up, which is fine. Like that is quite interesting and learning about different things. But oh, God damn, has Cassie Clare made this so boring. <laughs> if the chapters weren't so long, which I know it's kind of more like a pacing issue, I guess, but I'm just not invested in any part of this world. The characters are coming across as quite, again, like flat and whiny, which is fine because it's a teen book. It is a YA. So, you know, 15 year old Clary, she's allowed to be a bit, you know, whiny and shit. But yeah, so far I'm just not really connecting with anyone. We've just been introduced to, what's his name, Magnus? And I'm on chapter 14, which is the Hotel du Mort. But I'm reading this and I'm just saying, no originality to it. Like I'm reading this and I'm thinking, I'm sure I've read something like this before. And I do believe that this was what? Harry Potter fan fiction? I can tell, I can tell. Mundy's characters as well, I can kind of see how they're a bit of a rip off of like a Harry Potter character or even like a Buffy character. And I'm, uh, this could pass as fan fiction, absolutely. But the fact that it's trying to pass as something original is making me laugh. It's making me laugh. So as expected, I'm not loving it, but I, I I, feel like I recall some kind of controversy with Cassie Clare from years and years and years ago about some kind of copyright stuff. Like, did she actually like take whole things out from Buffy? Yeah, more instruments began as Harry Potter fan fiction. I can tell. And honestly, again, like I don't mind fan fiction and shit, but like when it's something like this where I'm just, it's so obvious. I'm just like, how did this get published? Oh, apparently she got her lawyers on those who called out her works for plagiarism or who had merely spoken out about their dislike of her writing. Shit, don't come for me. I ain't got no money to get a lawyer. Yeah, this is a long read, so I'll not mention it or bring it up again because I'm sure all of this has been resolved, maybe. Like, it's been a long time since all of these accusations and 
drama came out so I probably shouldn't be digging it back up again especially for a video where I'm reading her books like I'm late to the game what can I say yeah so far it's boring <laughs> it's not really piquing my interest I I'm getting some kind of flashbacks to I think either the movie or the pilot episode of the Shadowhunters TV show so some of it is coming back to me, such as how her mum has put like the spell on her so that she suppressed a lot of memories. Like that was, I mean, it was pretty obvious that she'd done that. I'm not gonna lie. Like it was obvious that her mum had done that. So Clary was like, oh, I wonder why my memories are suppressed and shit. Well, obviously it was her mum. Obviously her mum is hiding a lot. And also there's somebody called Valentine, who I think is like a big bad villain, who is rumored to be back, which honestly is just giving me such Goblet of Fire vibes, is Valentine Voldemort. So I'm not loving it and I'm not hating it. I'm on the fence with it. But I do have half the book left to go. It is the next day and I really wanted to get it done yesterday. Honestly, I, I was just distracted. I could barely focus because I was so bored. And then I was like, you know what? I'll watch a lot of YouTube videos instead. So that's how I spent my latter half of my day yesterday. So back on it today, it is raining. It is a lovely weather to read in the house. And I'll also try and get some housework done as well because I think that will make me feel better. The sick thing about all of this is that I didn't hate it. It's not good by any means, and I'm probably only gonna give it like two and a half stars, but like, I was expecting way worse. However, why do Jason and Clary have to uh, be related? Why? <laughs> That's just really strange to me. Really, really strange, especially since they're kind of pushed as this couple during this book. I mean, fair enough, they didn't really know about it beforehand, but it was still a bit weird. It was still a bit weird, a bit of a weird reveal. Also, I've noticed that Cassandra Clare cannot reveal shit. Like, what I mean by that is when she reveals something, like a twist, like, it's not really suspenseful. It just happens. Like, the whole Valentine stuff, it was just said. It was just stated. And there was just no, like, level of suspense to it, no kind of easing into it, building up the suspense. It was just said. And it was that was it and I was like okay well I guess I should just go fuck myself then other than that other than that I still didn't really like any of the characters I mean Clary did grow on me by the end of it but I think that was because like a lot of the other characters like particularly the male characters would treat her like shit so for instance Simon her best friend absolutely loves her but when he sees Jace and Clary kiss he like flips out on her and then he treats her like absolute garbage and he keeps saying like he used all of these women all of these girls when really his heart belonged to Clary but then treats Clary like shit because she doesn't reciprocate the feeling and I'm just like Simon who's showing their ass right now it's you you're the problem hey I'm a ba -ba boy to build wants the hugs don't you be be I love you. I love you so much. So that entire... I got off the laptop. So he was an absolute twat. And he just treated her like shit. And then at the same time, Jace took offence to Clary kind of pulling away from the kiss. Like, he was the one who initiated the kiss, by the way. And then as soon as, like, that confrontation between Simon and Clary happens, Jace treats her like shit and says, uh, you kiss me. And she was like, no, you kissed me. And, like, yeah, he kissed her. And he just treats her like absolute shit. Like, what the fuck? Anyway, it was just messy. It was just very, very messy. I don't like any of the male characters. Alec, I really wanted to like him the most because he's LGBTQ. But because he tried Clary like shit, like everyone else, I was just like, I really don't like what you're doing right now because Alec is like in love with Jace. Like he fancies Jace, you can tell. And so he automatically hates Clary because Jace is interested in Clary and Clary's interested in Jace. So Alec automatically is an asshole to Clary. But he says some like really nasty shit and like some awful stuff to her. And I'm just like, dude, he even like pushes her like very hard. Like, when I read it, I thought that he'd slapped her because of the way Cassie Clare wrote it. Again, it's, like, not very well written. I kind of got mixed messages with her writing style. But when he turned abusive, it was like, come on, dude. Like, oh, my God. Not a single likable character, quite honestly. I feel like Clary is probably my favourite character, but that's not saying much, considering I'm just... I maybe feel a bit sorry for her the most because she has gone through quite a bit. <sighs> Sympathy does not make you a good character. But... Yeah, we are. I didn't love it. I didn't love it. But two and a half stars, I think, is still pretty decent. I will round it up to a three. Oh, maybe I might go down to a two. I don't know. Because, again, like, it still didn't get any more original as the book went on. 
it was still a chore. It was still a chore. I was bought, you know what, two stars. <laughs> two stars, <laughs> that's what I'm giving it. I've talked myself into it. Now I remember how bloody long those chapters were and how slow it went. So now it's time for City of Heavenly Fire. Yes, I am skipping the middleman. So my predictions, I think, Clary and Chase are gonna be a couple, even though they're related. Because Valentine is the big bad, there's gonna be like a big war with him. I feel like maybe all of the werewolves and vampires or whatever will team up with the main characters to take Valentine down. It'll be a fairy Battle of Hogwarts-esque kind of conclusion. I didn't really care about anything else really for me to make any more predictions other than that. I feel like there's gonna be maybe one main character death, there's gotta be. There's gotta be some kind of main character death in this, right? My cats are being so cute right now. I'm sorry, I'm so distracted. Look at you, man. Are you cleaning each other? Yes. Oh, you're just so cute. You're just so cute. Ash, are you giving Tobe a bath? Ash? Ash, you giving Tobe a bath? Yes. Yes, you are. Is your beautiful, your best spot. So obviously I don't have high hope for City of Heavenly Fire, but I will not rate City of Heavenly Fire because I did that with Kingdom of Ash. I didn't rate it because it's a bit unfair for me to skip all the middle books and not have the context for it. So I won't rate City of Heavenly Fire, but I will be able to listen to it because I have it out on Libby. So we're gonna do this. I might put on a face mask, pamper myself, and read this goddamn book. Transformed into a demon from the Shadowhunters world. I just changed into this and I want to see what my cats react like to this because I mean it's so convincing I look like a cat myself. So I kind of want to see how my cats react. Let's test it out. Hiya. 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 Look at my face. Hiya. Oh, sorry. Do you not like it? Hiya. Hiya. Oh, you actually like it? Oh, I thought you'd be scared. Oh, but you actually like it. Oh. Well, that was a fucking bust. No clue who any of these characters are. I keep trying to do face ID and it just doesn't recognise. So I finished the prologue. I don't know any of the characters. Is this gonna be some kind of like throne of glass thing where people change their names in the middle of the series? So like, is Emma Clary? Is Jay Sebastian? Like, who is anyone? Although I think Sebastian's the bad guy. You seem quite bad. He had like the, the, the fairy cup or whatever it was fucking called. Um, I'm sure it was called like the mortal cup in the, in the first book. Have they changed the name of that as well? I don't know. I don't know anyone's goals. I don't know what I'm supposed to expect. I haven't even read the blurb of this yet. I feel like maybe these are just brand new characters. I mean, they could have been introduced in an earlier book. I don't know, but like, I should probably read a summary. They need to start making face masks for people with beards because again, like it just doesn't touch the bottom half of my face. In this dazzling and long awaited conclusion to the acclaimed Mortal Instrument series, Clary and her friends, okay, so she hasn't changed her name. Emma must just be a new character or somebody who was introduced in the previous books. Clary and her friends fight the greatest evil they have ever faced. Clary's own brother. Ooh, Sebastian Morton is on. The oh, so Sebastian is Clary's brother. Wait, so is, is Sebastian Jace then? Because it was revealed that they were related in the first book. So has he turned evil? Oh my god, that's actually amazing. Sebastian Morgenstern is on the move, systematically turning Shadowhunter again. Shadowhunter, that sounds really good. Bearing the Infernal Cup, or oh, the Infernal Cup, yeah, not the Fairy Cup, sorry. He transforms Shadowhunters and the creatures out of nightmare, tearing apart families and lovers as the ranks of his Endarkened Army swell. Endarkened Army, the Death Eaters, what's the difference? The embattled Shadowhunters withdraw to Idris, Idris? But not even the famed demon towers of Alicante. Alicante? I've been there before. It's a really nice place. I think it's probably one of the few places in Spain I've been. And with the Nephilim trapped in Idris, who will guard the world against demons? When one of the greatest... Betr this summary is just as fucking long as the fucking chapters in this. I could have shortened this... I'm getting bored. When one of the greatest betrayals the Nephilim have ever known is revealed, Clary, Jace... Oh, so Sebastian isn't Jace. That's a letdown. Isabel, Simon, and Alec must flee, even if their journey takes them deep into the demon realms. 
where no shadow hunter has set foot before and from which no human being has ever returned. Love will be sacrificed and lives lost in the terrible battle for the fate of the word for the fate of the word. I think there's some kind of spelling mistake on the summary here. For the fate of the world, I think that's supposed to say, in the thrilling final instalment of the classic urban fantasy series, The Mortal Instruments. Well, thank fuck it's the last one in The Mortal Instruments, am I right? So, I mean, half of it does interest me. The summary went on far too long. Yeah, I did say that there would be some kind of war and stuff. So, interested to find out if I end up liking this one. I'll still not rate it, but I'll, I still want to have a good time. The audiobook is like 20 hours long. Two times speed it is. Okay, something called the Heavenly Fire has entered Jace's body. What that means is anybody's guess. I'm assuming it's a bad thing. Could be something that makes him more powerful. Yeah, it could be anything. Also, Clary blew Jace a kiss. They do know they're related, right? Are they still related? I need to double check this. You know what? I don't care if I get a spoiler. I just need to know if this incest thing is actually going to be something or not. I'm just going to go on Google. At the end of City of Bones, Valentine tells them that Clary and Jace are siblings, which as they discover later in the series is a lie. Okay. Why the f Why the fuck? Why, why the fuck was that even a thing? What? When Jace found out from Valentine that they were, in fact, not siblings, Jace was eager to tell Clary, but decided against her when he thought that Clary was happy over Simon. Ooh, so Clary and Simon, what did they, did they get it on? Clary eventually discovered that she wasn't Jace's sister, but nothing changed in their relationship due to her relationship with Simon. Oh. Oh. Well, I, I'm just so confused as to why that would even come up. To be honest, like, that's just so weird. Well, I'm I'm glad they're not related, but that's still an odd thing. So if they get together, I won't repulse as much. So that's all right. Are they together, though? Are they together now? Is Simon and Clary still together? Because Clary went like that to Jace, blew him a kiss. So I don't know if that was, like, in a friendly way or what. Like, I just don't know. Mm, I need to, I need to read on apparently. Okay, me two seconds later, literally, I should have just read on because they've started making out, Jace and Clary. They've started making out, they're together. Okay, mystery solved. Update time. So it's the day after I'm 20% in. I did end up joining Mel and Liv on some Patreon sprints. So I did get to 20%, which I think is pretty good progress for my first kind of half day reading City of Heavenly Fire. I mean... <laughs> A lot has happened, hasn't it? <laughs> a lot has happened between the first and the sixth book, hasn't it? Well, <laughs> so what I'm getting is Alec and Magnus were a thing, which I kind of feel like I knew from the TV show because I've seen a lot of people ship them. So I kind of knew that was a thing, but apparently they'd broken up. Alec had betrayed Magnus, I think. I mean, that hasn't really been explained very well, but there was another character talking to Magnus saying, oh, you should, like, forgive him and stuff, and he's never been happier than when he was with Alec. So I don't know what happened there. I don't know the drama, the relationship drama between them, but apparently something happened, and they're not together. And honestly, I love Matthew Daddario and Harry Shum Jr., like, so much. So, like, I really do ship them. In terms of the book, I mean, I still don't really like Alec because of the way he was in the first book, but I bet he had some character growth between books two and five to make him a bit more likable. And it seems like Clary and Isabel, they are friendly as well now. And I think Jace can't really be that intimate with Clary because he has this heavenly fire thing inside him. And I think they're trying to find a way of getting rid of it. And I, I just, I, I yeah, that's kind of how I'm following along. To be fair, I'm following along with this one more than I did with Kingdom of Ash. It's not as like dramatically different to City of Bones, I think. You know, we still have pretty much the same characters with the same names. And it seems like they have a, a set purpose, a set goal. And yeah, there's a clear villain as well in Sebastian. And it it's it's absolutely fine, you know. I'm not hating it. I'm actually not hating it. Like I would probably give it like if I had to give it a rating right now in the first twenty percent, it would be like a three stars. I think it's on par with City of Bones for me. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to rate it because it's unfair. But like still, I'm just 
I'm kind of liking it. So I'm going to continue listening to the audiobook. I need to change my library room around a little bit today because I have my best friend of 20 years will be moving in and I am letting him have the room upstairs. So I'm going to be trying to fit a bed in here. I bought a new bed. It's coming on Saturday. But I need to fit a double bed, which I'm thinking of putting like here. But that, that was where my island used to be pretty much. So I've had to move the island further down and put it like... So I've got this kind of little runway. Like there's a runway for middle grade down here. I think it's pretty cool. But it depends on how the bed looks when it's in. And I've set it up because I think this is enough room. I think this is enough room like here. Without it being like two in the way. I don't know. I'm, I'm fixing things. So that's what I'm going to be doing as I listen to more City of Heavenly Fire. <laughs> Toby will get out. <laughs> Stop it! Get get out, please. I can't get out. I can't grab you. Oh, come on, Tobu. You're probably comfy, but your nails digging into my side is not comfy at all. Go on, go on, get out. Get out. There we go. Oh, oh. Build me up. You can tear me down. You can try, but I'm unbreakable. Oh, 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 oh. The fire has burnt, the wind has blown, my heart of stone. I'm so good. So you're telling me I read this entire series and not a single person died? Literally, what? I was hoping something would happen where a main character would have something of consequence happen to them. Like, don't include the whole, like, Simon forgetting about the Shadowhunter world and whatever, because by the end of the book, he starts remembering again. Him and Isabella are stronger than ever. Fuck that. I hate retconning. I hate retcons. I hate when a character gives something up and they just get it back anyway. What's the point? What's the whole point in that whole thing? I haven't introduced this segment. I've finished. And like, I know like this is like the worst idea in the world. This is probably going to be the very last, first and last episode I ever do because I just, I spend 20 hours listening to that I mean, 10 hours, because I did have it on two times speed. But, like, I could have used that time more wisely. I could have used that time reading Babel by R.F. Kwan, you know? Like, why didn't I do that? Why didn't I do something like that? I'm silly. So, yeah, I finished it. What happened to Valentine? Like, I just remembered as well, because I was talking about Sebastian in the last update. I'm like, what if it happened to Valentine? I... I I don't know. It was fine. It was fine. I feel like if I had been more into the series, I probably would have enjoyed the final book a bit more. Because a lot does happen. There is, like, a lot of stuff happening in the Shadowhunter world. We got introduced to, like, the Seelie Court. I mean, I say introduced. It was probably introduced in an earlier book. But, like, there was some things with Sebastian and, like, some, like, alliances being placed together and, you know, things happening, confrontations and some of it was good like it wasn't like painful to read but like at the same time i'm just like it could have been a bit more explosive more people could have died so yeah i genuinely didn't care about anything else like i didn't care about weddings i didn't care about people getting back together i just didn't i just wanted someone to die and i didn't get it essentially i just wanted somebody who was a main character to die call me a bitch I'd agree with you. I would. Genuinely, I've got nothing else to say other than I just spend that entire time listening to this book and not really understanding all of the context. Like, why, why, why does this series exist? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know because what do I benefit from this? What was the actual point? I would say I understood it more than I did Kingdom of Ash when I did the Throne of Glass first and last series. I did understand this quite a bit more. It wasn't as glaringly different. But yeah, there are some loose ends still to wrap up in. I just, I don't know. I, I mean, again, I would never read Cassandra Clare and I'm never going to read Cassandra Clare again. Am I glad I did this? No, I'm actually not glad I did this. <laughs> Literally, guys, this is like the end. This is the series finale. I'm cancelling this series right here, right now. There was no point. This was a waste of time. Everybody's watching this right now thinking everybody could have told you this and everyone did say this and I should have listened. This is one of the very few times where I say, guys, you were right. This is the worst idea I've ever had. It is. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you this one time. Yeah, it just wasn't all that enjoyable. And of course it wouldn't be enjoyable because I didn't read books two through five. <laughs> I say I'm cancelling this series. 
Is there another series you would like to see maybe the first and last of? <laughs> I don't think I would do this again. I genuinely don't think I would do this again. So that's the end of this episode and potentially the entire series. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all the comments down below. Tell me how stupid I am. I will absolutely take that. And I will take it with grace. I will. I will take it with grace. I won't block anyone. A huge thank you to my wonderful patrons for their support. I do have a link to my Patreon and all of my social medias down in the description box if you want to check me out on any of those. And I will hopefully see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs> Why? Why? This was the stupidest vlog I've ever done.